What's going on guys? National Master James Canty the third here and today we're covering a Grandmaster going down to the Scotch Gambit. Let's get right into it guys. This is one of my favorite openings. So Blitz game, I played them and I won. So here we go. Playing the Scotch Gambit guys. I love the Scotch Gambit or the Scotch Gambino. We, we also call it that here at the channel. And we have um, the simple moves here of the Scotch Gambit. Okay, we can take here, which is a Scotch game. Of course, we do have the Scotch Gambit quick starter guy and a playlist connected to this video for you guys to watch. But Bishop C4 is Scotch Gambit. So it's about rapid development, tricks, traps, tactics, and positional play if you know what you're doing. So at the Bishop C4, Knight of 6, E5, this is mainline stuff. D5, Bishop B5, Knight E4. This is literally mainline stuff. Right, I'm not even thinking. Knight takes d4, which he's not either, because this is uh this is main line. Bishop takes c6, b takes c6, castles. Now it's very important to understand ideas and concepts and even like chess fundamentals, period. Because in this kind of game, it's all about the square in front of the pawn. There's a very famous quote about that that the most important square is the square right in front of the pawn. So here it's all about the c5 square. So watch how we play this. Castles, bishop c5, right? He's gonna develop, that's the best move. F3 and then knight g5. Still book here. F4 and then knight e4. He can also go knight e6. Um, this is also covered in the quick starter guide too, guys, so you guys know. Um, this is like we already covered this kind of stuff. So this is still theory here. Bishop e3, castles, and a knight b2. So now this is probably one of my favorite ones to play because I don't have any issues here ever. Really, I know all the lines, and it just feels good for white in um, all positions here. After knight to d2, he captures. He, he thought for a little bit here too, actually. And... Um, he didn't capture because capturing gives a lot of uh, play for for white here. Knight to b3 is coming. I mean, we always have a clamp on c5. This is always going to be good for white. But uh, he played f5, which is actually one of the stronger moves in this position. Which uh, if I opposant f6, and I think he can take with the queen or the rook here. But um, either or, basically, he has an okay position here. And I, I don't have the e5 pawn anymore. And I'm not a fan of this anymore. He, he's very active for him. And also it says that you need to keep the tension. So right here. Uh, of course, I can um, I can opposite, but keeping the tension is what they say a lot of times will help you and benefit you in the, in the position. I don't have to opposite, so I didn't. Knight takes e4 is generally the, the move to make here. And if pawn takes, I was expecting f takes e4 because this is the stronger move. I follow up actually with c4, and I've just done prep here. I just know the c4 is the move that the engine likes. is c4 usually from this position. But um, he actually took with the d-pawn. D takes e4. And then I play queen to e2. Uh, attacking queen c4 check is the main threat here. And I'm just going to pick up some material. So he played bishop takes d4, which I haven't seen too much. And that was, this was a grand master. So to know that, guys, bishop takes d4 is not really played that much. And now we, we enter an opposite color bishop endgame. But I have the better position. Why? Because I just have, first off, I have the open files. I'm more developed. I'm a little bit faster with rapid development. That's why you gambit a pawn in the first place here in this opening. And he has double pawns here. Opposite color bishops does not mean it's going to be a draw. A lot of times I can even capture this pawn. And if stuff gets traded off, then I have a pass pawn that uh, runs. And I'm able to finesse this in game many times, guys. Uh, it's very, very strong to understand how this opening works. So here we go. He plays bishop to e6 here, attacking the queen. And right here, I was kind of stuck. I was like, do I play queen e3? Or do I play rook a to d1? Or do I play bishop c5? Like, I really didn't know here. Let's actually check the engine. Engine says, this best move is rook f to d1. So I play rook a to d just because I like to hold the rook over here. But um, rook f to d is the best. Okay, rook f to d. So I play rook a to d. And let's turn the engine off. He played queen e7. And then I played queen e3. So immediately I'm hitting the a7 pawn. I'm also hitting bishop to c5 here. And in this position, guys, he just blundered and played bishop to f7. That's not a move. That's not a move. Now, of course, it is a GM, and he's going to play extremely hard. Grandmaster here afterwards. But, hey, I'm taking the material. Bishop c5, queen e6, snap, snap. And now I'm up in exchange here. I am now up in exchange. So now let's finish this out. I played b3 because queen takes e2 is in the air. I just don't really like it. And I have to be careful because sometimes this, in combination with the e3 pawn and the queen coming over here and the bishop, like sometimes if you're wrong, you're going to be in some trouble here. And, of course, grandmasters are going to use everything in the position. So he plays a5. A5 here. And I, I was assuming a4 was coming. And I thought about this for a while, guys, for white. Like what do you actually play here for white? What would you actually do? What's your plan here? And this is exactly what I was thinking about because there's nothing for me to actually target right now. Besides this A pawn, 
there's literally nothing to target and that you need targets you need something to attack if you have nothing to attack what do you actually do right so i sat here for a while and i was like well what can i do what, what's an asset in a position and i realized that the d file is actually what i have here so let's see what the engine plays very curious to see what they play they play rook to d4 really rook d4 just that's a super active move queen a7 i was not a fan of that i didn't want my queen to be too far away and queen to d4 oh queen d4 yeah queen d4 queen d7 trying to get the queens off quickly that could have been a nice way to do it i i followed up with rook to d2 though rook to d2 i just wanted to dub dub on above double on the file here it's actually plus three now let's go bishop h5 stopping my double up right and then i play queen to c5 all right i'm turning the engine off so we don't look at it every single move queen to c5 here so i was looking for uh queen takes a5 and then i was saying i was saying if i take this i should be okay here and if i have to give material back meaning like you know sacrifice my rook for the bishop at least i have a winning in game and you have to notice this guys when you get stronger if you want to get stronger you got to notice sometimes you can give the material back when you want to and also when the time you know when the time is right here for me I'm, i have a winning in game so if we trade and we go rook you know a rook in game or a true in game with rooks off the board um it it would be great for white here so i noticed that and uh this is weak so let's see what happens he played h6 now i captured and he played e3 and i was like ooh, i gotta be careful because he does have some counterplay rook to d1 is a fatal error due to e2 and also he could take it but e2 is even better best move is rook to d4 that's what i play here i play rook to d4 he played e2 and i play rook e1 and i noticed my queen can come back here and, and hold everything and he started to not lash out here, but he has to use everything in his position. He played g5. You have to use everything you can in a position here. I have all the files and diagonals. He played g5. I went back queen to d2 just to put some pressure here and see what happens. Then he went rookie eight, and I calculated, well, I could just capture both of these. And if he does try to trade queens here, this is going to benefit me. So I captured, anticipating he would take here, which he did. I took on h6, and if he checks, I just capture it, and I'm just winning in this end game. I'm just going to win this endgame, probably starting with a4, a5, get the rook behind the pawn and start pushing so I can lock this rook down over here and just like have free mobile range to do whatever else after that point. But um, he, he didn't go for this, of course. He played uh, king h8 after taking. I play rook to d7, just get the rook on the file and just get the queens off the board. Simplify, simplification, get rid of the big pieces and everything else, all the counterplay that he can do so I don't have any issues. He played f4, queen d4, and now... It's just a little bit of technique, and we should finish this out. F3, right? Now, this gets crazy. Queen takes e5, rook takes e5, g takes f3. And now I'm like, oh, okay, I'm good here, right? Rook takes c7. I can't wait to show you guys this move that happened. King f2, king g3, hitting the bishop. Then he plays here, and I play rook g7. So this was a star move. I love this move. Because, of course, that my intention is, like, if he takes, then he loses a piece here. And if he doesn't take, well, then he loses a piece anyway. And that's exactly what happened here. He plays c5. I took on e2. Now, I actually just captured this, which I didn't even have to touch this at all, which is an error for me by me. I just never had to capture this pawn, but I did. I captured it. He played rook a5. And now the problem here, guys, is I did this right here. Rook e7. So now, yes, it's still winning. Let's turn the engine on. It's still winning. But I thought he got away with a draw technique. Somehow, some way, I was like, oh, my goodness, how did I let this happen? Watch this. Look at all the checks. Rook a3, king h4. And then he plays rook h3. Whoa. Oh, my goodness. Somebody know the end games. That's why the man is GM. King takes h3, and it's a draw. Stalemate. Wow. You thought you did something. So I had to move my king around. I couldn't take it. He checked me again. Oh, snap. If I take, it's a draw. King g6. And actually, um, I'm just going to show you guys what I did. But uh, the, the engine said I was fine regardless then he capture here i'm like i can't capture it's still a draw so i just start walking my king around just to find out what i'm going to do here now just so you know the engine says right now i'm still winning plus 10 because i thought it was a draw and i was like man did i really hang a draw here king d7 rook d8 king e6 and he went rook d6 i went king here and then he went rook f6 and the best move is king f4 Oh, wow. King e4. All right, that makes sense. Yeah, king e4 would do it too. King e4, because if he goes either of the checks, I could take with either of the rooks, and it's mate. Or not mate, but oh, it's going to be mate soon, but and there's no more stalemate. There's no more stalemate. Rook here, I could take this way. He can go there. 
Um, and the other way, rook check, I can take care. He can go there. So I'm fine. And now I'm out of it. But I actually went king to g5. I think here we had like four seconds or something. I might have like four seconds on the clock here. No, I had I had a little bit more time. But something, it was very low. It was a long time. King to g5. And then he played rook to g6 check. And then I just captured it. And it's, you got to move your king into me. Oh, my goodness. And that's the number one. We won another one, okay? 1-0, another win for the Scotch Gambino. So all you guys who are Scotch Gambit fans, this is for you. We won another one here. We beat each Grandmaster here um, with the, in a Blitz game here. Um, with ease, basically, in a way, because we know the Scotch Gambit. If you don't, check out the playlist right here on the channel. Thank you so much for watching the video. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already, so you can catch all the other updates, all the other videos. Like this video, share this video, all that other good stuff, guys. And I will see you on the next video.